So six months ago in February, we got FSD update 13.2.8, and it was three months after that, so three months ago from today, that we got a tiny point release of FSD 13.2.8. Dot nine, which didn't bring any changes to the release notes and nobody's really sure if that update changed anything at all anyway. And so of course we're all impatiently waiting to see what is going to happen with FSD, especially considering hardware three still needs updates. The Tesla Robotaxi is out there driving with nobody in the driver's seat in Austin, Texas, and it's driving in California with somebody in the driver's seat. And Elon Musk has been posting a lot on X lately no, not that. No, none of this. Oh my goodness. Imagine we get it. It's pretty cool. But he's also been posting about Tesla FSD updates for a couple of weeks now, and everything is leading up to him now actually talking about Tesla's version 14 software that is going to be out in about six weeks by the end of September. Now, yes, we all know Elon Musk and timelines do not go together very well. And while I would love to see some posts from other Tesla accounts like Tesla AI, because those seem to be very accurate in their timeline estimates, he has been talking about these updates for a while now and keeping that timeline consistent. Of course, once the RoboTaxi was released, a lot of people were wondering, when are we going to get this RoboTaxi software on our vehicles? And what version of FSD is the RoboTaxi even running? Now, I don't have any concrete evidence, but I'm pretty certain we can say the Tesla RoboTaxi is running FSD 13.3. Yeah, that's not very different from our 13.2.9 we have in our personal vehicles, but we know it has some new abilities that our vehicles do not possess. Now, Tesla has done thousands of miles, there's been no big incidents from the RoboTaxi rollout in either Austin or California. I would hope not, especially in California. But overall, the rollout has gone very smoothly so far. And during this rollout, while people are taking these rides, again, this is an open service that if you have access to the app, you can use. Tesla has been collecting data and making the system better and better. We also have no insight into if the RoboTaxi software has been being updated this entire time. I would guess they're not using the same version today that they were using when I was down there on launch day a couple of months ago. So a few months ago, Elon talked about how there should be a 4.5 times increase in parameters that should be ready for wide release later this year. He said that back in June. He followed up a bit later saying that our Tesla's full self-driving capabilities will see step change improvements as Tesla integrates updates that they've made from the Austin RoboTaxi build and add those into the general production release, which is what we use on our vehicles today. And then in July, Elon Musk did confirm that these updates that we're talking about and hoping for are good for quarter three. So by the end of September, Elon is again talking about this next FSD release that we hope to get by the end of September. He says the FSD release in about six weeks will be a dramatic gain with a 10 X higher parameter count and many other improvements. It's going through training and testing. Now, once we confirm real world safety of FSD 14, which we think will be amazing, the car will nag you much less. The major recent complaint with FSD in the past few months is the nag is unbearable for most people. Now, I'm going to be honest, from my perspective, if I'm sitting, staring forward at the road, I don't get any nag and it seems to work really well. The times I do start to get nag is when I start to look away from the road, which I think is how it's supposed to be used. Now, I understand it's super annoying if you're just trying to adjust your climate or your navigation or something, but the times I'm getting nagged the most is if I do try to do something quickly on my phone, send a text message like with voice or anything, just looking over there, it seems like the car is smart enough to kind of realize, yo, you are doing something you are not supposed to be doing right now. Pay attention to the road. I'm actually increasingly seeing this sentiment from so many different people. So many people talk about how FSD is so good these days and does pretty much all their driving. I post videos of the same thing. While we still have to pay attention, I'm finding FSD is doing most of my drives for pretty much the whole thing. I am curious about your experiences with FSD, so please leave those down below. We need a wide variety of experiences from lots of different people to really know how this is going. But the most common sentiment I'm seeing from a wide range of people all over the internet is that FSD version 13.2.9 is working great for them. And their number one complaint, the thing they want improved the most is getting rid of the nag. The other thing people really want improved is getting their personal information deleted from the internet with today's sponsor, Delete Me. Did you know that data brokers are collecting your personal information, like your full name, your address, your work address, your phone number, your email, all kinds of other sensitive information and selling that information about you to nefarious third parties. When data brokers do this, it can lead to identity theft, phishing, and other scams. So it is incredibly important to get your information removed using Delete Me. Delete Me scours the internet for your personal information being held by these data brokers and gets it removed. I've been using Delete Me for about two years now, and I have personally seen my information removed from these websites and disappear overnight. Delete Me can save you hundreds of hours by scouring these websites for you, deleting your personal information with you not having to lift a finger. 
Delete Me will then send privacy reports so you can see what websites had your information, what information they have, and show you that it's been deleted. So don't wait, use my link down below, joindeleteme.com slash dirtytesla to get your personal information removed from the internet today. Thank you to Delete Me for sponsoring this video. Now adding on to the version 14 updates and talking about the reduction of NAG, it seems like that's gonna be a big theme in this update. Now, we've heard before that the NAG has been reduced, and I gotta say, it does seem like you have a little bit more time to look at the screen, maybe say two to four seconds instead of one to two seconds that you used to have. But this claim has been made a couple of times before, and for the most part, people generally agree that there hasn't been much change in the NAG. But Elon is reassuring that the NAG is going to be reduced. He says that the FSD software update that we can expect next month will substantially reduce the need for driver attention, but some complex intersections, heavy weather, or unusual events will still require attention. He points out that the Austin RoboTaxi FSD build is already six months more advanced than what is available on our cars today, and there are some additional breakthroughs that will make the car feel eerily human. Now, I love that he phrased it that way because I remember when version 13 first came out, that is one of the things I pointed out is the way the car moves about the world. You know, version 12 was good, version 11 was pretty good, but version 13 is where it really felt like the car was looking around and thinking in a way that I could compare to other people. The way it accelerates, the way it turns, the way it makes decisions, it really feels like the car is looking around and picking from the different options available and then going forward with the best choice. Honestly, I think one of the hardest things about this next update that we get is trying to suss out what is really going to be different because as a lot of people are agreeing online, again, post down below in the comments if you don't agree, FSD is driving so well these days that I don't know how much we're going to see in terms of driving improvements in general. Now, I definitely have a few things. Uh, my number one thing I'll point out is like sticking with the speed limit and not dropping speed too much. There's others that I don't want to get into in this video right now, uh, but there will be a few things like that that everybody has that's more personal preference. But for the most part, the safety of the car is so good. The stopping, the creeping, the turning, all of that has felt so good for so long now. I'm not sure we're going to see a huge difference. Now think of this parameter count as kind of like increasing the brain of the car overall, meaning it knows more situations. It's ready for more edge cases than it ever has been. You can compare it to like somebody that just got their license versus somebody that's been driving for 40 years. Someone that's been driving for 40 years can come across a weird scenario and very calmly and easily handle it most of the time. Whereas if you just got your driver's license and something crazy happens, you won't know what to do. You might panic, you might freak out and make the wrong decision. Now version 12 of FSD was the first time we had the end-to-end -end neural nets with parameters and all of this kind of being taken into account. And when we went to version 13, there was a parameter increase there as well. And I asked online and the consensus seems to be that people are thinking version 12 to version 13 was anywhere from a 3x to a 10x parameter increase. And I got to say, going from version 12 to version 13 was huge. Version 12 could do a lot of drives. I didn't have very many zero intervention drives on version 12, but I did. I had some. Version 13 cranked that up by so much. And there were so many consistent issues in version 12 that just disappeared with the version 13 update. I was pretty blown away at that time. And so I'm hoping we can see something like that with version 14 as well. But again, the car drive so well, I think a lot of what we're going to see is going to be weird edge case scenarios that we are not normally encountering. But when we do, instead of being like, oh, the car almost got it, that was pretty good, FSD can handle this weird scenario that I can't even think up right now for a YouTube video because it's so crazy. But FSD still knew what to do. Now, there are a lot of potential upgrades we could get with version 14, like something like Banish could be included where the car goes and parks itself after it drops you off. Cybertruck could actually get Smart Summon. Hardware 3, Model S and X could actually get Smart Summon. But another upgrade with concrete evidence that could be coming with version 14 comes from Green the Only over on X. He was digging into the vehicle and he found that Tesla is adding Unreal Engine based visualizations. The binaries are already shipping starting from firmware 2025.20 only on AMD based S and X cars for now. Now this would bring better graphics on screen for what we see when we're driving the FSD visualization display. Now the importance of this has been debated over the years. Some people think it's pretty useless because if the car really can do everything, you know, who cares what it shows you? Just let it do its thing and don't worry about it. Other people think it's incredibly important because especially in this time where we're still technically supervising, even though the car is very good, you need to have some level of confidence that wherever you're at, the vehicle understands 
understands the situation you are in and is going to make the right decision. I think we all agree that right now, if our FSD visualization showed there were no vehicles around, but we were surrounded by vehicles, that would be a little bit concerning. So not only is this important, I think it can be pretty fun. Now, it's been a long time since we've had a big graphic overhaul. FSD has had some graphics changes over the years. Of course, the original FSD just had dots and boxes for everything. Then we got our vehicles back and we got some chalky looking drawings on the ground. I got to say, this is actually one of my favorite implementations. And even last year, we got the update where we went from like 30 frames per second FSD visualizations all the way up to, I'm guessing like 60 or 90 FPS. And it does look way better with that smoothness added. We are also curious about FSD version 14 coming to other areas of the world, like Europe, China, and Australia. It's been talked about a lot and Tesla has been posting videos from all over the world of FSD safely navigating these different difficult scenarios that are kind of unique to each geography. Of course, they have a human in the driver's seat, hands are near the wheel, they're ready to take over, they have to do this. But seeing the car drive itself, as we've seen over here in the US for years, is very cool in these other difficult situations all around the world. If version 14 is really, let's just simply say 10 times better than version 13, I don't know how you could show that to regulators and show the extremely low amount of issues per mile that you would get. I'm talking like over a million miles between disengagements we're looking for here. And the regulator saying, no, we don't want that here you would reduce accidents and deaths dramatically. And in my opinion, it would be irresponsible not to have the software on the roads. Again, if that proper safety is proven. Now also loosely related to this version 14 update that again, I'm holding out high hopes that we're gonna see it by the end of next month. I know it may slip, but as of now, it's been so consistently uh, framed as coming out at that time that I think we're gonna be pretty close to actually seeing it then is RoboTaxi. So RoboTaxi did get another increase in Austin. So the service area is even bigger. There have been a few more robo taxis added in Austin, but it doesn't seem like very many. And so wait times are increasing there. Elon did respond to a post about robo taxi and said that it will be open access next month. Now this seems to mean anyone will be able to download the robo taxi app and hail a robo taxi. Now what's interesting about this is technically Tesla only has robo taxis in Austin, Texas. They have a rideshare program over in California where the driver uses FSD, kind of. I don't think they actually touch anything unless there's an emergency. Uh, they're there for legal reasons. But either way, they don't call it RoboTaxi over there. They're not allowed to. The only place that Tesla has RoboTaxi is in Austin. Now, Elon didn't specifically say RoboTaxi will be open access next month. He said it, and I assume the app will just open up. But it's an interesting thing to think about. And if Tesla is gonna do this, it means several things. Number one, safety data is looking good. They are not seeing issues. The robo taxis are doing their job. There's no critical disengagements that are needed. Number two, Tesla is dramatically going to expand the number of robo taxis that they have on the road. Tesla can make hundreds of Model Y per week. If they want to expand this fleet to 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000, they could do that in a matter of weeks, especially considering the inventory they have waiting to be bought. The explosion in the number of robo taxis on the road could be insane if Tesla, number one, has the safety data to do it, and number two, can get rid of the safety driver <laughs> because you're not gonna wanna hire thousands of people to sit there and pay them and that's just gonna be kind of pointless. I really think Tesla is aiming to get the safety passengers out of Austin, Texas by the end of the year. There are some regulations coming into play next year that I think would make this kind of weird for them if they can't do that. That's just speculation on my part. But then also over in California, you're not gonna want a bunch of robo taxis or Tesla ride hailing or whatever you wanna call it with somebody in the driver's seat. Now, Waymo had people in the driver's seat for a while as well. A lot of you point this out in the comments a couple of videos ago. And in California, you have to prove the safety by actually driving the miles autonomously. But it's like, wait, you're not allowed to drive autonomously unless you prove the safety by driving autonomously, but you're not allowed to. So how do you do it? And how you do it is exactly what Tesla's doing. They have somebody in the driver's seat. They're letting the car drive autonomously, but technically there's somebody there. And then you can present that data to the state and say like, look, it's safe. Let us take this person away. It's similar to what Waymo did back when they had to do it. And now they don't have people in the driver's seat. So that is the big difference. If Tesla can get these humans out of the front seat, whether they're in the driver's seat or the passenger seat, they have almost unlimited amount of Model Y that they can throw out on the road and say, hey, go, you know, be a robo taxi and then money's flowing in. It's going to be a crazy time. So overall, I'm very excited for our next FSD update. Our cars are going to get better. Uh, Hardware 3, 
hopefully, I know a lot of people have been commenting about that. I want to mention really quick, Tesla did say they're going to solve this for hardware four, whatever that means. And then they're going to move to hardware three and do what they need to do to bring it up to the same level. I'm not saying that's a great answer. I'm not saying that it's great that you have to wait all this time, but I am just throwing out the latest update we got from them because a lot of people have been commenting like, oh, there's silence from Tesla. And, you know, regarding that last update, which we got on the last earnings call, I don't know what else you really want to hear. It's that they're going to make it work and then they're going to make it work on hardware three. So hopefully that'll be sooner rather than later. But there are lots of people all over waiting for these FSD updates. Excited to see what Tesla has to bring. I will talk to you down in the comments and you will see me in the next video.